Perfect, thank you. Um, so I'm going to talk about the uh, presentation API today. Uh, and the main things I'm going to talk about is um, a bit of a background on the theory uh, that underpins the presentation API. I'm going to focus on the canvas, which is a really important part of the presentation API. And then I'm going to talk about um, how people generally go around uh, creating uh, IIIF manifests in particular uh, and other uh, areas. And then I'm going to have a look at some um, examples of IIIF 3.0 with audiovisual. Uh, and we're going to look through some of the recipes. Um, also, um, if you want to follow along, there's quite a few uh, links that I'm going to use in the presentation. Um, and this is linked from the agenda, but if you click on that link, uh, you'll be taken to uh, a quick training page I've set up. Um, and that should have all the links in the presentation if you wanted to follow them and, and see how they work. So in the last meeting, uh, before we had the break, we looked at the uh, image API and three different ways of using the image API, or three options. Uh, one, to use a commercial company. Two, to use um, an existing software provider like your dams. Uh, and then we also looked at how to install the image API, API itself. Uh, and the image API is, is great for images, but as soon as you want to do more and to create these kind of presentation packages, uh, then you need to move on to the presentation API. And so the sort of things that are in a presentation API is uh, basic descriptive metadata, uh, rights information, so reuse information about the object, links to other digital objects, uh, sequences, which is kind of sequences of images. Uh, so a book, um, a manuscript, uh, those kind of pages in, in order. And then table of contents, is, which are called ranges, uh, and it's all underpinned uh, by a linked data vocabulary called shared canvas model, um, which I don't cover here, but I can answer questions if people are interested. And if we look at a manifest in Mirador, um, you can see that everything in blue comes from the IIIF image API. Um, so the main image, uh, the main image in the front, this manuscript image is coming from the image API, and that's what's allowing you to do the deep zoom into the image. And then the thumbnails as well, those are coming from the image API, but it's all really brought together using the presentation API. Um, so presentation API uh, features include the label, uh, the table of contents, and the order of the pages, um, and then it links to the IIIF image API. And if we have a look at a manifest, um, this is an example from the National Library of Wales. Um, and you can see it's in a format called JSON. Um, it's also in a format called JSON-LD, um, which just means that it's both JSON, um, which is great for kind of web developers, um, but it's also linked data. So JSON-LD is this combination of JSON, uh, which can also be interpreted as linked data. Uh, and this is what it looks like. Um, so you have kind of square brackets for lists. You have these um, curly braces for um, objects. And then you have a key example label and a value, which is the value of the label. And you can see in this example, we've got an ID. Uh, and if you put that URL into a browser, you will get this manifest. So it's kind of self-referential. Uh, and that's part of the link data aspect. Uh, then we've got the label, which we saw. Um, service, which you, I might go into later, which is about the search API. Uh, metadata, and this is descriptive metadata for the user. Uh, and then we've got a big description. And then we've got a license here. Uh, a logo, uh, attribution for the digital object, the sequences I talked about, which is that list of images, and the structures, which is the table of contents. And if we just have a look into these different areas. Uh, we start with the metadata. Um, this is probably different to the type of metadata that you're more used to. Um, it's not um, kind of a standardized list of metadata fields. Um, if you look at two manifests from two different institutions, um, the choice of metadata will be very different. Um, so, for example, we've got date here, um, but another institution might call it a different thing. We don't uh, control this metadata section at all. Uh, it's just a list of labels and values um, that are meant to be shown in a viewer. And so it's concentrating on what makes sense to the user. If they're looking at this material, how do they know what they're looking at? And that's what you put in the metadata section. And although it's not structured, um, it is bilingual or multilingual. Um, in this example, um, we've got uh, the keys that have been translated, but the content is still one language. Um, so uh, if we look at author, 
uh, it's tagged as English and then Audir is tagged as Welsh. But you can see that the name of the author is um, doesn't have a language associated with it. Um, so you can translate either the keys or the values or any combination of those two. Is there a question? Sorry. No. Uh, no. I'll carry on. Uh, I've got a point at the end, which I'll, I'll pause for questions before going on to um, some of the other examples. Uh, metadata. So just to reiterate, it's, it's for humans, it's not for machines, um, and that's by design. Um, it does, in IFFF, you can have the see also link, uh, and that's the place to link to more structured metadata, um, like Dublin Core or EDM or any other um, that you have. A um, few different. Oh, yeah. Yes. Gwen, could you uh, make me admin real quick? Yes, that's what I'm going to do. Um... Do you still see, see my screen? Yep. Good. Um, yeah, so the metadata, the C also link then to link to more structured metadata like EDM or any other metadata format. And then just looking at some of the other values, so the license is shown here. Um, in the next version, um, there's much more restricted list of licenses. Uh, it can either use uh, writestatement.org or Creative Commons. Um, and you're encouraged to use those two rather than uh, this example, which is more of a customized version. Um, then you have the logo, which is the National Library of Wales logo, and then the attribution. Um, and this must be shown by a viewer. Uh, and this tells you who owns the material. Uh, and then structures. Uh, so this is um, table of contents. Um, this particular um, book is uh, a list of um, the fallen in World War I uh, from Wales. And it's ordered by um, kind of the different branches of the military and then each different uh, regiment has a section and um, so it's got about four or five or six different levels of hierarchy uh, and this is all possible using uh, structures um, a range in in player then we have the sequence uh, and I mentioned this is a sequence of images so you can see at the bottom uh, we've got uh, a number of images uh, there and they're in a particular order and this is contained in the sequence and inside the sequence is a canvas. And the canvas can be think, uh, thought of as equivalent of a page of a book or a single painting. Uh, and a canvas is a bit like a PowerPoint slide where you paint different things onto the slide. Uh, and I'll show that in the next example. So I say that canvas is king. Um, canvas is kind of one of the most important parts of the presentation API. Um, and it is this blank canvas which you paint things on. Um, so the, for this particular example, we have a canvas and we have an image which is painted onto the canvas um, so that the canvas is filled with the, um, with the image. And so in this example, canvas width and canvas height are the same as the image width and height. Um, and this is probably the, the most common use case where you just have a single image which is filled onto the canvas. But we can also have an example like this, um, which is a choice. So both the uh, original uh, digitization of the artwork is painted onto the canvas. And then the x-ray version is also painted onto the canvas in the same coordinate system. Uh, and this means that the user can switch back and forth and be given a choice between the two different images. Um, if you follow this link um, on the slide and also in the, the link I sent you uh, in the uh, agenda, um, it's a slide bar and you can see the different versions of the image, uh, the original version and the x-ray version. And what's quite interesting about the x-ray version um, is that you can see um, around John Dee there is a, a layer of skulls um, just around the fire um, that you can only see in the x-ray version. And then it's been painted over uh, in the final copy. Um, so that's a way to put two images onto the same manifest and give the user a choice between which one um, they display. Uh, another alternative with this canvas is that we're going to paint two images onto the same canvas, um, but different positions. Um, so the manuscript page is painted on the full canvas, 
um, but the illustration is painted onto this particular part of the canvas. And the reason for that is that these, um, in this example, uh, the two images are coming from different places. Uh, so the, manifest, the manuscript is coming from uh, the BM, BNF, the National Library in France, and the illustrations are coming from a different institution in Paris. And both institutions have published, published them as IIIF images. And then someone's created a manifest where these two images are reunited digitally. Um, and again, in the links I sent, uh, you can see the, the live demo of this. Um, and if you click the affix miniatures, um, you'll see the miniature pop into the image and you're able to zoom um, as if they're one image. It kind of really overlays it quite well. Another example is this uh, from the Yale Centre for British Art. Uh, this is a, a painting that they're doing conservation work on. And what they've done is they've done very, very high quality images of certain portions of the image um, so that they can do a before and after the conservation to see how uh, the conservation has changed things. Um, so for example, if you're looking at um, this lady here, you can zoom in uh, a lot more detail than the, the rest of the image, um, but you can really zoom in to see the details of the paints and what work is required. And then they've also digitized the whole painting using different uh, light spectrum. Um, so there's UV, uh, I think there's an X-ray version here, and infrared version. And you can switch back and forward using uh, Mirador to be able to show these different uh, layers of images. And they're all being painted onto the canvas at certain different coordinates. But you don't need to just paint um, pictures, you can also paint text. Um, so this is an example of a newspaper where the newspaper page is painted uh, onto the canvas. Uh, and then we've got an annotation list, which is a list of um, transcriptions. Uh, and you can see in this example, um, the on is targeting the canvas at a particular X, Y width and height. So it's drawing a box and it's saying at this box, there is the word to, uh, and at this box, there is the word the. And when you show this in Mirador, um, you can see it's loaded the annotation list. And as you put your mouse over the words, it tells you what um, the annotation uh, is showing. And with IIIF version three, um, the way it does audio visual um, is by adding a canvas duration. So not only do we have a width and a height for the image, um, but we also have a duration. And this again allows you to build up a presentation. So you can see here that um, we've started with just a picture and it's painted as the full canvas width and height. And also we're saying that it should be shown for the full duration of the presentation. And then we can add other things. So this is a, um, a video of the fire burning and that is being painted on at this particular coordinates. And it's saying it's duration from second four to second seven. So as you're seeing it, and again, there's another link in the list of links, um, but this is a video and as it plays, um, you'll see the different videos being painted onto the canvas, uh, text being painted on the canvas, different pictures uh, to give a full presentation. Another really good example of this um, is this, and it's a video and I will play it, but it's, um, you'll see that the video has been painted on the canvas. Uh, and as the video has been playing, uh, it's also highlighting the music uh, as it's being played. And so this is all a canvas and this kind of coloring annotation uh, is being paid, played at different times uh, as the, of the canvas duration. I'll just play this. And this is from the um, McGill University um, who have put this together. So, so far I've talked about uh, manifests and canvases and a manifest is a single JSON file, um, but these can be organized into collections. Um, so a manifest is the, the lower level and then above that you have collections. And this can be really useful for things like uh, journals or newspapers. Um, so in this example, um, we've got the Red Dragon National Museum of Wales, uh, and this is a manifest. Um, so it's one issue, it's been published in one day, uh, and that is uh, one manifest. And then for every different issue, um, they're collated together into a collection at the journal level, so the journal title level. 
uh, you might do this into volume, so you might have three levels, so you might have um, individual issues which are manifest collated into a volume uh, collection which is then part of the journal title or newspaper title collection. Um, so that's the way, the way you do hierarchy in AAAF. And the collection is a separate uh, JSON file, um, which is defined slightly differently. And when you open up this in a AAAF viewer like the Universal Viewer, you can see that um, you can navigate the hierarchy. Um, the journal example uh, has a special feature called NavDate, which is a field in the collection and the manifest. Um, to give it a date that it was published. Uh, and that date is in a structured date format, which means the Universal Viewer um, can uh, order that date and allow you to navigate by date. Um, but if you click the volume at the top, you'll also be able to navigate by the name of the issue. Um, so it gives you the option to navigate in both ways. A more complicated example um, is an archive. Uh, and these can have many, many levels of um, hierarchy. Uh, in this particular example, I think there's about seven levels of hierarchy um, with and everything above the kind of bit which you're handling, bit which you'd request or view in a reading room. Um, this is a manifest where you've got the images. But as soon as you get higher than that, these are all collections and you can have collections at any level. And again, this is what it looks like in the Universal Viewer. Um, you, see, you can see we've highlighted one section of the hierarchy and then we're going to go down uh, and then it'll show us the, um, as soon as we get to a, a level which is a manifest, um, you'll start to see the images uh, in the Universal Viewer. So I'm just going to pause there um, for some questions, uh, either in the chat or um, un we can un unmute. Uh, coming next, I'm going to talk about how do we generate manifests and then we're going to have a look at AAAF 3.0 uh, and the AAAF cookbook and um, see some demonstrations of what manifests look like uh, in AAAF version 3. So are there any questions? Doesn't seem, doesn't, seem, <clears throat> doesn't seem like it. Um, can we just maybe have a quick show of hands in the chat? Uh, uh, how many people in the call are using AAAF or at least investigating it at their institute or within any of their respective projects? Okay, a few shows, shows of hands. Um, could be the case that um, this is quite uh, quite high level, uh, but uh, I think that's okay uh, just to show the breadth of functionality that IIIF has to offer. And something that I'll bring up at the end as well, but we'd love to hear from everyone if uh, there's interest in more maybe hands-on or one-to-one -one or small group tutorials or workshops um, that we hopefully can do virtually uh, and maybe even part of Europeana 2020. Great, thanks Gordon. Great, Alexi. Okay, well, carry on I suppose okay. then Glenn, thank you very much. So generating manifests. Um, so with many of the IIIF um, APIs, uh, there are lots of tools available that you can reuse. Unfortunately for the presentation API, um, we found in practice that uh, everybody's metadata is slightly different uh, and everybody's system is slightly different. Um, so it means that it's, it's very difficult to create a generous, general purpose uh, kind of manifest generator and so most people are tending to um, write their own and they, they tend to be relatively simple scripts um, which take as input um, metadata about the item, some kind of structural data to know the order of the images 
uh, and then links to the AAAF uh, image API. And you can bring them all together to create this manifest.json. And generally, um, people are just storing the manifest.json uh, and making it available rather than generating it on the fly. Although there are a couple of places which are generating it on the fly. But generally, the manifest, manifests are quite large, um, so it can be quite time consuming. Um, so they kind of pre-generate them, store them, and then make them available uh, on the internet. Um, there are some tools and libraries, and if you go to the awesome IIIF list, you'll see a list. Um, one particular that I'll highlight, which actually isn't on this list, but it's called IIIF, uh, and that can be used on a directory of images. Um, so if you've got a directory of images and a config, um, you can give it those and it will generate the manifest for you. Um, so that's a really good one to kind of start with. Um, but as well as these kind of tools to create manifests, um, there's also something called the Bodleian Manifest Editor. And this is much more of a, um, a user-friendly uh, way of doing a manifest by hand. Um, so it's no good if you're creating hundreds, um, but if you're maybe a researcher or you want to um, just pick out certain images and put them together in a manifest, um, then this tool is really, really good to use. Um, and I think I've got a, a link at the end of this presentation to a, um, a hands-on workshop that we're actually running on at the moment. Um, but all of the content is, is available for free. Um, and there's a video there about using the Bodleian Manifest Editor um, to be able to create manifests. And I can, I can show you that if I have included it in the slides. So there are the two ways, really, that people create manifests. The automated script-based method, which is great for bulk, um, and then the bodily manifest editor, which is uh, more for kind of the custom uh, or trying it out or um, more research uh, purposes, you might use the manifest uh, editor. So I'm going to move now on to the um, cookbook. Uh, and this was something, let me go to here. So I've created this uh, page here um, for this session. Um, and it's, no, it's not this one. Go here. So we have this um, IIIF training site um, where we're trying to put all of our online training on there. Um, the workshop I mentioned is this IIIF online workshop. And you're welcome to have a look at this. It goes through the uh, image API, the presentation API, and also annotations. Um, we're trying to run these monthly now. Um, and we've got one on this week, and the next one will probably be in October sometime, uh, for kind of assisted learning. Um, but you're welcome to follow this um, by yourself without assistance, uh, and you can do that anytime. Um, and if you do have problems, you can reach out. Um, there's a beginner's channel on the Triple S Slack if you do have questions. Um, but we also do these supported versions, uh, and have a look out on Triple F Discuss and Eventbrite for those. Um, but I've also created this uh, presentation API uh, one for us today. And as I mentioned, it links to all of the different links that I put in the presentation. Um, but I'm going to talk about now is the IIIF cookbook. Um, so with moving to IIIF version 3 that was released in June, I think it was, as the final version, uh, we wanted to be able to help people um, kind of do the migration from 2 to 3 and see what's changed, but also be able to create some resources um, so people can copy them and edit them um, and try to kind of get inspiration about what's possible. Um, so there's still a lot of work to do, but um, I'm going to go through a couple today. So this is the cookbook, IIIFIO slash API slash cookbook. Uh, and if I go through the first one, image, um, most people that start with IIIF, especially if they're creating manifests, um, is you find one that's working uh, from somewhere uh, and then you edit it to fit your needs. And that's where the vast majority of people do it that way. Uh, they don't start from a kind of a blank sheet. They kind of find what they're working, what's working, and then they edit it to their own needs. And so hopefully this cookbook will be a great place for people to go to and see what they're trying to do uh, and edit it. Um, so this particular example is kind of the simplest um, single image file. Um, and when I say single image file, this is a direct link to an image. So if we have a look. So 
so this is the image we're working with uh, and you can see it's just a straight image it's not a triple if image um, so this is going to be really useful if you're working with content which maybe you don't own um, but you want to be able to put it in a manifest to start annotating it start start using it or viewing it in a viewer um, but maybe you can't take the image and put it in a triple if image server um, so we've seen examples of this where um, say researchers particularly interested in uh, content from a museum uh, that they don't support AAAF but they do um, publish a URL for their images and so you can take this image and you can put it into a manifest uh, and then uh, if I have a look in, in Mirador you can see it, it's loaded the image um, and although you won't be able to zoom very deeply because the, the size of the image isn't great um, it is usable um, and you can start annotating it. You can do all of the things you want to do in AAAF uh, just with a straight image. Um, so this is quite useful. And you can see here, this is an example of a AAAF version 3 manifest, um, which is different to the ones that I showed you in the presentation, which were version 2. Uh, and I'll go through some of those differences. Um, so the first thing is this ID, which I mentioned. Uh, in the presentation, it was at ID, uh, but in version three, it's just ID, uh, so it's a bit easier to remember. Um, but this should be the thing that you can put in a browser, and you should get to the JSON file. So there you are. I've put the URL into the browser, and it's given me this uh, JSON file. Um, so that's something that should always be the case. The ID and the manifest should always resolve to the manifest itself. Um, we have a type to say it's a manifest. We have a label. Um, in the example that I showed you, we had a label and a string, uh, and that was in version two. But in version three, um, we've made the decision that you have to give everything a language, or there is also a null language, like an undefined language, um, but you have to be explicit about it. Um, one reason for that is to make sure that language has a kind of a more forthright um, functionality in the spec that it's uh, much clearer. Uh, if it is English, it says it's English, or if it's um, French, it says it's French, rather than kind of being implied. Um, so a French institution might have just published everything as French uh, and not tagged it as French or English or vice versa. Um, so with version three, you have to be a lot more explicit about the language of the labels or explicitly say uh, null or unknown um, in there. So we've got the label. Um, it says it's English, and in this particular example, it's image one. Um, in, go on. Good question. No, I don't believe it's a question. Oh, okay. Um, next is the items. Um, so in version two, we had sequence, which was the collection of images. Um, in AAA three, it's just called items. Um, so in items, um, we have the canvases, uh, and the canvas is exactly the same as in uh, I showed in the presentation, where you're painting things onto the canvas. And you can see here that this bit is the canvas. Uh, and within canvas, we have items, and within items, we have this annotation here. And it's basically saying that this particular image is being painted onto this canvas here. Uh, it says also that the width and the height of the image are this. And then the canvas itself also has a width and a height. And you can see in this example, um, the width and the height match both the canvas and the image. Uh, and that's the case, as I say, for 99% for of uh, manifests. Um, but there are some examples where they, they would be different, uh, like that example from the, the BNF with the illustration being painted on. Um, but in this example, they match. And so what we've got here is a very basic manifest for showing a single image uh, in AAAF. The next one I'm going to show is um, the basic AAAF image recipe. So this one hasn't yet been through the appro approval process, um, but I'm hoping that it's going to be approved uh, in two or three weeks. Um, but this is about supporting deep viewing uh, so this is the same manifest as in the previous example, but instead of a flat image, it's now going to be a triple F image. Um, and you can see very similar label items. We have a canvas. Uh, and then the only real difference is the service. 
uh, and this service points to the AAAF image API. You can just about see it there. Um, so if I copy this link uh, and put it in my browser, it's forwarded me on to the info.json. So the info.json is part of the image API, which gives you the information about the image. Uh, and you can see I went from the manifest um, to the info.json. Uh, and then you can start doing the um, uh, AAAF image API from here. And then we've got the image. So again, um, we have a width and height for the um, width and height for the canvas. And if we look at the info.json, uh, we should see that the width and the height of the um, of the image uh, match what's in the canvas. So this is another example where the image uh, exactly matches the canvas. Um, and then we can view it in the Universal Viewer and also in Mirador. So now we have a AAAF image. So it looks very similar to the previous example, um, but you should be able to zoom a lot further into this one um, because it's a bigger image and because we're using a AAAF image API, uh, the zooming is going to be a lot uh, smoother and quicker than the static example. Uh, and you can see also in works in the Universal Viewer. The next two I'm going to show you about uh, are audio and video. So if we have a look at the audio one first. So again, very simple, uh, similar to the other one. We've got the label, we've got the manifest, we've got the ID, uh, we've got the items, which is a list of canvases. Uh, this time, this is an audio one, um, so it just has duration, uh, and this is measured in seconds. Um, and instead of painting here an image, we're painting on a, a MP4 file, and we're saying that the duration is exactly the same as the canvas duration. So it should play for the entire duration of the canvas. Uh, and I will open up this in the Universal Viewer but it, it does take a minute to load. So you see that was uh, a manifest um, for the full duration, a single audio recording. Uh, and it plays an MP3. Um, there are ways to configure the Universal Viewer to recognize if it's an audio recording and then just show this bit at the bottom without this uh, black screen. Um, but for this kind of example, we, we haven't done that. So that's an audio recording. Uh, last one to show you is the basic video recipe. Um, so very, very similar to the audio one, ID type label, uh, and items, list of canvases. And then the important thing here is that um, it's got a height for the video, a width, and also a duration. So it's got all three things. Um, and again, we're painting on this video here, which is the 30 minute clock uh, and MP4. And again, the height, width, and duration matches canvas. So for the whole presentation, the um, video should be playing uh, to cover in to be part of the whole canvas. And if we show this in the Universal Viewer, so not the most interesting of videos, um, but hopefully it shows you the kind of what's possible. So there were the recipes that I wanted to show you. Um, there are some more, uh, which I'll just go through for interest. So we're trying to build up this complete list of um, recipes. And you can see the ones which are underlined are the ones that have gone through the approval process. Um, we have a number of people looking at these recipes to make sure they're clear uh, and to make sure that the, the manifests are correct um, so that people can trust them. Um, but you can see the image or video, the very simple ones are done. Uh, 
image different size to the canvas is, is one that's hopefully going to be approved uh, within the next couple of weeks. And the same with the image service, and that's the one that I showed you, which is going through the approval process. Um, we need somebody to write the multiple values and languages. Uh, and so we, we do take volunteers um, to write these recipes uh, and we meet weekly to go through them. So if you are interested in, in writing a recipe, uh, do get in contact. Um, embedding HTML and descriptive properties. So for this example, you might have um, a description and you might want to link to your website or you might want to uh, link to something in the attribution. Um, there's a, a recipe for that. Uh, there's a recipe for how to do write statements and how to include them in a manifest. Um, we have a, a book example, which is, is almost ready to merge. Um, we've got some more complicated ones. So this one is loading a preview image before the main content. Um, so for a very large uh, video, you might want to show uh, a, an image uh, while the video is downloading. Uh, and there's a way to do that in the manifest. And then audio presentation with an accompanying image um, is a way of creating kind of an experience that if you're say listening to a recording, um, you might have a, a picture showing um, as the audio is playing. Um, so you sometimes see this in um, some audio applications that, well, iTunes is probably a good example where you've got the cover art of the album uh, as the music's playing. Uh, and this recipe shows you how to do that. Uh, we have an example of a start, so uh, there's two ways of doing start. This might be that um, you want to start the recording 10 seconds in, uh, and maybe it's because the recording starts with 10 seconds of silence, and you might want to jump to the start, uh, and you can do that here. And you can also do it with um, images, so um, sometimes uh, manuscripts are digitized with uh, blank pages at the start, and you don't want the user to go straight to a blank page, so you might do the start to jump to a particular uh, point. Um, company in Canvas, I believe, is uh, underway. Um, and then this is the start for a, a time-based material. Um, but you can see there's a lot of examples, and there's also one on a newspaper. Um, so if you're wondering about how to model a newspaper in IIIF version 3, um, you can go and have a look at this recipe, and it'll uh, show you how to do it. So I think that's everything I want to show you. Um, let's go back to the slides quickly. So in summary, what I've shown you today is um, we've had a look at a manifest and what it uh, contains and how it relates to the viewer. Um, so we looked at the metadata rights and links and you can see how they're shown in the viewer. Um, we've concentrated on canvases because they're really important to the way that the presentation API works. And then we've also looked at, uh, briefly, its ranges, so table of contents. Um, I talked about the tools that are available, um, but highlighted that most of the time um, people create their own tools. Um, because the metadata and systems are so different between people, we haven't really seen the emergence of, of shared tools like we have in the image API. And then I've gone through the IIIF cookbook, um, for examples. And I didn't include in this, but I also um, showed you the uh, the workshop we've got with a, a hands-on video um, that takes you through the Bodleian Manifest Editor um, if you want to find out more information.